Hello, it's Interpixel, and welcome back to another video. So, in this video, I just wanted to share some uh, code that I wrote, a function called innercss, that has made my life in JavaScript a lot easier. So the problem arose when I had to keep on typing, you know, element.style dot blah 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 and I thought, you know, why not just use the CSS, right? And I know that a lot of people are going to say, oh, just use a framework, stop using vanilla JavaScript. And my honest answer to that is, because I'm still quite a, you know, beginner web developer, I'm still slightly scared of using frameworks, although I am forcing myself in my next project to use one. I think I'm going to go with Svelte. Anyway, off topic. But if you are like me and you like using simple vanilla JavaScript, which, you know, can achieve quite a lot, then this just might help uh, because you can code with CSS and it works, you know, much more intuitively. So the first slide uh, basically shows how you have this code here, which is normal JavaScript. I've just highlighted a few things here, which I said in the introduction, how element.style.property too much repetition you see in these lines, you know. And then document.body.offset width, you know, this is just really wordy. And it'd be great if we could use the CSS calc function and use, you know, custom variables to divide it, you know, that sort of thing. I think that'd be nice. And we can see that from this code, we get this nice result. Um, and you, you know, it's a variable based on item count and that. Anyway. So, now, if we turn that into the inner CSS function, uh, we can see that it looks relatively the same. In fact, it even uses a few more lines, but it gives you the same result and it's quicker and easier to code. So you may say, hey, look, there's literally more lines here. What are you on about? But I'll tell you that per line, there's actually less writing that you're doing. Um, and personally, I, th I quite like the fact that you can use a nth child and then make it dynamic. I think that's quite nice. And honestly, every single style property uh, can be dynamic. Here it also says that it supports all valid CSS selectors. So what I'm doing here is nothing fancy. I'm just um, creating an algorithm which then extracts the data needed, which is the names of the elements. And then I run them through a dot query selector all. And then I apply the styles for each item, which is also extracted. So, yeah, it's it's as simple as that, really. And I'll sh show you here. This is just a brief explanation of the function. You see it's really short. It's only 45 lines long. And you can see here that uh, I will provide this slideshow in GitHub. Or if you want to, you know, start using it straight away. And if you do want to understand how this works a bit more, then you can read up on the GitHub because this text will be a bit bigger. So, thank you for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments about any mistakes or improvements that I can make to my function in a CSS. Goodbye for now.